I am Anil Kumar. Now let's move forward and learn how to solve inequalities involving reciprocal functions. Here is an example. We are going to solve 2 over x plus 3 greater than 29 over x. I'll show you two different ways of doing it. The first method will kind of use a graph. To plot the graph, I'll take the constant terms on one side. So leaving 3 here, we could write our inequality as 3 is greater than 29 over x minus 2 over x. And that is 3 is greater than 27 over x. Now we can plot both these graphs and graphically see the solution. So let's say that is our coordinate system. 27 over x will be a graph which is kind of 1 over x vertically stretched. So here is a very approximate diagram. Okay. And definitely x is not equal to 0. We have a vertical asymptote right there. Now, the graph for 3 should be something like this, y equals to 3. Let me just sketch a line here. Let's say this is y equals to 3. Now, from the graph, we have a clear solution, which is we want this line to be above the graph of reciprocal function. That is, we have to find what this point is. Once we find this point, then we know that line is above the graph on the right side of this point and from 0 onwards to the left side. So that becomes the solution. Is that clear? Now, when are they equal? So we can solve for it. When is 3 equal to 27 over x. Well, that gives us x equals to 27 over 3, which is 9. So this point is 9 for us. Once we know this is 9, we can say that the solution is what? Solution is from minus infinity to 0, union, from 9 to plus infinity, right? 9 to plus infinity. Is that clear? So this is a very straightforward method. However, graphically, we may not get very accurate results. So here we have the second method, uh, which we use values. So we'll have a table of intervals. So we'll kind of analyze and then find the solution. Now in the second method, what do we do? We bring all the terms to one side. So, so let's take this 3 on the right side. So we get 0 is greater than 27 over x minus 3. Now we could write this as 0 is greater than common denominator is x. We get 27 minus 3. And we can rewrite this, factor the numerator, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, 3x. x is the common denominator. So 3 is common, we get 9 minus x over x. So we have a rational function on the right side. Do you see that? We want that to be less than 0. We want that to be less than 0. So we'll analyze this particular function now. So what we will do here is kind of make a table with zeros and undefined values. At x equals to 9, we have a 0, right? So, so we have a 0 at x equals to 9 when this factor is 0. And then this factor is undefined at x equals to 0. We have undefined. 
So we'll analyze the rational function on the intervals which are divided by zeros and the vertical asymptotes. So this interval is from minus infinity to zero and then we have from zero to nine and from nine to infinity. Let's take test points in these intervals. So from zero to minus infinity, I could take minus one as a test point. Here I could take one as a test point and 10, right? Now, what do we test? We'll test these two factors. So we can test the value for x and also the factor three times nine minus x, right? As far as x is concerned for a negative value it will be negative for positive it will be positive now 9 minus x is going to be negative for negative 1 i mean positive if i substitute x as negative 1 so it becomes positive for 1 also it is positive 9 minus 1 is 8 but for 10 it is going to be negative but when we divide these two what do we get that is what we try to analyze. When you divide positive by negative, you do get negative, right? Positive by positive is positive, and this will be negative. When we say zero is greater than this, we are looking for a solution where rational function is negative, which is these intervals, correct? So these intervals are between minus infinity to zero, and from 9 to infinity, just as we saw earlier, correct? So we get exactly the same solution from this table, right? So we get our answer as from minus infinity to zero, union from 9 to infinity. Is that clear? Now these are two very good methods to apply for situations where we have rational functions as shown here. Now if it is specified a particular method you have to go for that otherwise you can choose any one of these methods. I hope these steps are absolutely clear and you understand how we have done it. Feel free to write your comments and share your views. If you like and subscribe to my videos that would be great. Thanks for watching and all the best.